People with communication barriers can range from those who are deaf or hard of hearing to those who have speech impairments to people with limited English proficiency. Likewise, individuals with the same type of communication barrier can have very different communication abilities and preferences. For example, while one person who is hard of hearing may be proficient at reading lips, another person may not be able to read lips at all. It is important to ask the person how you can best communicate with them, keeping the following things in mind. People with communication barriers might wish to communicate orally through writing, through the use of an interpreter, or by using gestures. A person who is deaf might not be fluent with written language. Individuals might demonstrate one or another combination of communication impairments. A communication barrier may be a primary disability or it might be a secondary disability. If an individual is deaf and also is blind or has a visual impairment, to get their attention, you can tap on their shoulder and then step back and allow the person some time to get their bearings. There are special interpreters available to help you communicate with deaf-blind individuals. There are some ways to improve your communication with people who are deaf or hard of hearing. It is all right to use the term deaf or the term deaf person. Deaf culture uses deaf first language since being culturally deaf is a marker of positive identity and pride. This is an exception to person first language rules. A deaf person relies on vision a great deal in their communication. So you need to face the individual and maintain eye contact while communicating with them. To get the attention of a person with a hearing loss, call their name. If there is no response, you can lightly tap them on the shoulder or the upper arm or wave your hand. Use facial expressions and body language to communicate emotional content of the message, such as displeasure or approval. When a deaf person communicates, the facial expression is a very important part of American Sign Language. It's like a hearing person's voice showing the emotions. The police don't understand that. They think a deaf person's gesturing and facial expressions mean that they're looking for trouble or being antagonistic. Watch individuals' eyes to make sure they understand. And do not rely on affirmative head nodding. Be aware of the environment. Large, crowded rooms and hallways can be difficult for people who are hard of hearing. Bright sunlight and shade are both barriers to understanding nonverbal communication. Watch for signs that a deaf or hard of hearing person wishes to communicate. Also, keep in mind that not all deaf people or people who are hard of hearing can speech read. If you try to communicate with speech reading, keep the following few things in mind. Speak clearly and expressively. Use a slow to moderate pace to determine if the person is able to read your lips. Do not exaggerate or raise the volume of your voice or shout in any case. Even the best lip readers can only understand 20 to 25 percent of what is being said. So be sensitive to the needs of people who are reading lips by facing the light and by keeping hands and other objects away from your mouth 
while speaking. If you're asked to repeat yourself several times, try rephrasing your statement or write it down. If someone depends mainly on sign language for communication, an interpreter should be located as soon as possible. It's vital to recognize that when hiring the services of an interpreter, all commentary, questions, and concerns should be addressed directly to the person, not the interpreter. Police officers are required by the ADA to ensure effective communication with people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Whether a qualified sign language interpreter or other communication aid is required will depend on the nature of the communication and the needs of the person. A family member should not be used as an interpreter, especially if the family member is a child. If the person requests an interpreter, an interpreter should be provided. The length, importance, or complexity of the conversation will help determine whether an interpreter is necessary for effective communication. In a simple encounter, such as checking a driver's license or giving street directions, a notepad and pencil normally will be sufficient. During interrogations and arrests, a sign language interpreter will often be necessary to effectively communicate. If the legality of a conversation will be questioned in court, such as when Miranda warnings are issued, a sign language interpreter may be necessary. Police officers should be careful about miscommunication in the absence of a qualified interpreter. A nod of the head may be an attempt to appear cooperative in the midst of a misunderstanding rather than consent or confession of wrongdoing. In general, if an individual who does not have a hearing impairment would be subject to police action without interrogation, then an interpreter will not be required unless one is necessary to explain the action being taken. Communicating through sign language will not be effective unless the interpreter is familiar with the vocabulary and terminology of law enforcement. So your department should be sure to use interpreters familiar with law enforcement. Likewise, an interpreter who is used in a medical setting, such as a hospital, should be familiar with the specialized health terms. If a violent crime or similar urgent situation is in progress, an officer's immediate priority is to stabilize the situation. If the person being arrested is deaf, the officer can make an arrest and call for an interpreter to be available later at the booking station. You may be called upon to assist a person whose speech is difficult to understand. Although in some cases this may indicate a degree of intoxication, it is also likely that this individual has a speech impairment. Once you have determined that drugs or alcohol are not a factor, you can more effectively and efficiently communicate with this person by following some simple guidelines. Do not mistake a disability for intoxication. People with certain types of disabilities may display behaviors that are misinterpreted as evidence of drug abuse, intoxication, defiance or belligerence. Before you assume anything, ask the person if they have a disability. For example, cerebral palsy is a condition that impairs muscle control. Some people with this condition may have an impaired gait or speech that is frequently mistaken for signs of intoxication. For these individuals, dexterity tests for signs of intoxication, such as walking a straight line, will be ineffective. A breathalyzer test will be more accurate and will help prevent false arrest. It should not be assumed that a person who does not speak clearly also does not think clearly. Some conditions such as cerebral palsy may impair a person's speech without impacting cognitive functioning. Um, I think the main barrier that I had to do is uh, people perceive me um, uh, because of the way I talk, a lot of people 
assume that um, not all there in the head. And that's not true. Uh, a lot of times they tend to um, pretend that they understand me and they really don't. So, you know, a lot of times they'll say, uh huh, yeah, yeah, and they have no clue, no idea what I'm saying. So I'm thinking in my head, yeah, no clue what I'm talking about. No, so. Avoid interrupting the person. Wait for the person to finish rather than correcting or speaking for the person. Do not pretend to understand what is being said if you do not. Instead, repeat what you understood and allow the person to respond. The response will clue you in and guide your understanding. It is also okay to say, I don't understand. Please repeat that. Or can you say it in another way? You can also ask the person to show you by pointing or gesturing. If you are trying to determine where a person has sustained an injury, ask them to point at or touch the part of their body that is hurt. If possible, give two options for them to pick from. For example, is your chest or your stomach hurting? As you point to your own chest and stomach. If necessary, ask short questions that can be answered with a few words, a nod, or a shake of the head. There are a number of tools and technologies that can facilitate communication. Ask the person if he or she has a device that could help with communication. This may include a communication board or a mobile app. However, it is suggested that you stock your emergency response vehicles with various communication tools so they are available to you at all times. Communication boards are large laminated sheets with pictures that can be used to help facilitate communication. These are widely available online. Links to communication boards are provided at the end of this training. Have pencil and paper available and use them if necessary. Any mobile device, such as a cell phone, could be used as a medium to communicate through typing. Consider looking into and downloading mobile apps onto your own mobile devices that may assist with communication. As with others who have communication barriers, you can ask a person who speaks a different language than you to show you where they are hurt or injured by pointing or gesturing. You may need to rely on facial expressions, nonverbal communication, or a communication board until a suitable translator can be located. It is important to obtain a certified translator as soon as possible. To determine which language the person speaks, you may acquire a tool such as iSpeak. Portable or telephone interpreter services are also available. Some resources providing interpreter services, as well as many other resources, can be found on our First Responders Training website at www.go.osu.edu slash first responders. Family members or trusted friends should only be used to help translate as a last resort and only in emergency situations. Using loved ones to interpret can be problematic since critical information may be lost in translation or the family member may not understand your instructions or the terminology that you are using. Call ahead to the medical center to inform healthcare workers of the person's need for a translator and the language needed.